So what we're going to be going over today is a very difficult topic to cover. So we're going to have to use 100% of our brain power right now, and that is going to be the Holy Trinity. Now, this kind of works out perfectly because the second song we sang said, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. So it's kind of like it was meant to be today. Um, but yeah, the Trinity, let's, before we move on, I'm going to talk about why it's important. Well, first of all, the Trinity is the God that we worship. It's the God that we serve. It's the God that we revolve our entire faith around. So that's already important enough in itself. And secondly, without this, we would have no Christianity at all. So I think that it's good if we use the brains that God has given us to try to help, to try to fully understand who he is. So what we're going to be going over today is what is the Trinity, where it's found in the Bible, and how to explain it to someone in a simple term, but also how to understand it in a more complex form. So let's get a basic understanding first. What does the Trinity mean? Well, Trinity comes from the word triunity, which means three in one. If you search up the definition of Trinity online, the Christian definition it will give you is the unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as three persons in one Godhead. So far, I don't think I've said anything new. I think everyone here has this basic understanding of the Trinity as three in one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit in one. But if you think deeper about this topic, you'll feel like you get a little bit confused. How can three be one? Three is greater than one. You know, we sing a song at Kids Church that says one plus one plus one equals one, but in reality, it doesn't. So how can God exist as three in one? Well, let's look at why we believe that God is a trinity at first, which is by looking into the Bible. And first, we're going to focus on the one. Well, one stands for one God. How do we know we only have one God and not three? Well, let's look at the scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, and your might. So here we clearly see that the Lord is one. Let's look at the next verse. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Once again, we clearly see that we only have one God. I think we all know that, but we see it throughout the scripture in over 100 verses. So now let's focus on the three. Well, the Father, well, the Father is fully God. How do we know this? Let's look at the next verse. Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. Do we not all have one Father? Did not one God create us? Why do we profane the covenant of our ancestors by being unfaithful to one another? Let's just ignore the second half of the verse. But the first one says, Do we not all have one Father? And did, we, did not one God create us? So when it's talking about the Father, it's talking about God. I think we can clearly tell that here. So the Father is God. Now the Son, well the Son is also God. How do we know this? Let's look at the next verse. 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. We know that the Son of God has come and given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Jesus is literally described as the true God and eternal life. Let's look at one more about Jesus. This is Jesus directly talking in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So this is Jesus speaking, and it says, I am, the Alpha, I am the Alpha and the Omega, followed by, says the Lord God. So here, again, we see that the Son is God. The Father is God, the Son is God, yet we only have one God. Well, let's look at the Holy Spirit, and I think we already know where this is going. Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. But a man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? So, let's pause right here. So he only brought a part of the proceeds, and Peter says, why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? Well, as we look further in this passage... Let's look at the last two sentences. It says, why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. So in the first half of this passage, he says, you have lied to the Holy Spirit. Now he says, you have lied to God. Why is that? Well, they're interchangeable because the Holy Spirit is God. Let's look at another verse to make sure that we've got the right idea. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. 
In the beginning of the passage, we see again that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and yet in the end, it says that our body has God inside of us. Why is that? Well, the God and the Holy Spirit are interchangeable because the Holy Spirit is God. So what do we know now for sure looking at the Bible verses? We know that we only have one God. We saw that in the beginning. But we also know that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. So we have one God, and yet we have three people claiming to be God. Well, to make it even more confusing, let's look at the next verse. Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. So the Son is being baptized, the Holy Spirit is coming down from the sky, and the Father is speaking from heaven. So God is getting baptized, God is coming down from heaven, and God is speaking from heaven. This is extremely confusing now. But the point of going through the verses was not to understand how the Trinity works, but it was to understand why Christians believe in the Trinity. Why do two billion Christians around this earth believe that our God is triune? Well, this is why. We see that we only have one God, that's for sure, but he comes to us in three ways. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you actually understand how this works? Because so far, this is really confusing. Well, I'm going to use an example of a three-leaf clover. So imagine this entire leaf being, imagine this entire plant being God. He takes up this entire plant, and yet one of the leaves is the Son, one is the Father, and one is the Holy Spirit. They are all separate from each other, yet they form one God. This is kind of an easy way to understand it if you were explaining it to someone who you're talking to, if they're like, what the heck does the Trinity? That's confusing. But Something about this picture doesn't actually show us the full picture of God. Does anyone know what it is? Anyone? If you want to yell it out, you can. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit would all be one being. Exactly. If anyone doesn't understand what he said, in this picture, the Son is only a third of God, the Father is only a third of God, and the Holy Spirit is only a third of God. Yet in reality, the Father is 100% God. So is the Spirit. And so is the sun. So they would all take up the entire leaf while there still would only be one leaf, which is impossible to show with a picture. Let's look at another example we can use to better understand it. So let's imagine H2O as God. The Father is ice, the Son is water, and the Holy Spirit is steam. They are all made up of H2O, just as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all God. And they are all separate from each other, just as water, ice, and steam are all separate forms of H2O. This is an even better way to understand the Trinity. It's even more clear than the last example. But yet again, this picture doesn't fully depict who God is. Because, well, H2O can only exist as one of these forms at a time. And yet God exists as all three at once. So how can we fully understand who God is, who this triune God is, this complicated being who is just impossible to understand? Well, we can't do it with a picture because a picture can't fully show it, but we can explain who he is with our words. But first, we need to look at the definition of three words, being, person, and nature. What is a being? A being is the state or fact of existing or something that exists. I am a being because I exist This microphone is a being because it exists. A person is the combination of characteristics or qualities that form an individual's character. So I have my own set of characteristics that form my character. Dennis has his own set. Artyom has his own set. We all have our own set of characteristics that form our character. And the last word is nature. Nature is the thing that makes the thing what it is. That is really confusing. Um, description, but for example, I have a human nature. I have everything that I need to be a human, just as all the rest of us do here. So how can we use these three words to explain who God is? Well, first, let's use an example of a rock. Now, a rock is one being because it exists. That's it. It's one rock. It exists as one, and it's one being. A rock is not a person. Well, first of all, because it's not alive, and also because it has no characteristics that form its character. Now, let's look at a man. A man is one being, one person, and he has one nature. How can we break that down? Well, a man is one being because he exists as one man. He's one person because he has one set of characteristics that make him who he is, and he has one nature, which is a human nature, just like all of us do. 
And lastly, let's look at God. Well, God is one being, he's three persons, and he has one nature. This just gets more and more confusing the more we go ahead. So how can we actually understand this? Well, God is one being because he exists as one God. That's what we read through the scripture. God is three persons because he has three separate sets of characteristics. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all separate from each other, which makes them each a separate person. And yet all three of them share the same nature, which is the divine or godly nature. What do you need to have a godly nature? Well, you have to have all the attributes that make you God. You have to be all-knowing. You have to be all-powerful. You have to be all-loving and so on. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all have these. So if we were to explain God with one sentence, this is what we would do. God is one being who exists as three persons who all have their own distinct characteristics but all share the same godly nature. Now, does anyone here feel like you're just like, you can almost understand it, but there's like a piece of you that just like can't fully grasp it? Anyone? Yeah. Well, if that's the point that you're at, then that's exactly where you should be because in reality, no matter what we do, we cannot fully explain our God. And that's just the truth. No matter how smart you are, you'll never be able to understand God. And the reason for this is because as humans, our minds are limited. We can, all we can understand is that one being can only be one person because that's what we're limited to. But God lives in a realm where one being, well, there can be a multi-personal being. Imagine it this way. I think all of us have played Mario on the DS before, right? And you're like running around with this 2D character. Well, when you're in a 2D world, you can't even grasp the fact that there's a three-dimensional world out there. And right now, we're living in that three-dimensional world, but we can't grasp the fact that there's a fourth dimension. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means that we can't humanly comprehend it. It's the same with God. As humans, we can only understand that each person, each being is one person, but God, who is above our level of understanding, is a God who is multi-personal, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, I guess the purpose of today was not to fully understand who God is because I don't have the formula, just as nobody else does, but it was to show why we see why we call God the Trinity. You see Trinity everywhere, the Holy Trinity, the Trinity Church, the Trinity universities are named after the Trinity, and now you know why this term came in place, because it's found in the Bible, and now we know why God is called the Trinity, because it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who are all separate, but yet all God. Thank you.